Schlegger set up on the outside, the 0-2. Hits the spot, and that one is drilled deep left center field. You can kiss it, goodbye. Max Anderson with his 17th home run of the season. An absolute moonshot to left center field. Gives the Cornhuskers an early 2-0 lead here in the top of the first. Rivera at second, dancing. He takes off to third. Teal swings, lines it up the middle. That's down for a base hit. Rivera around third, and the Tom Sox have tied it here in the eighth. Aiden Teal, who else? He stays hot. Two homers yesterday, a game-tying RBI single here in the eighth, and we're knotted up at two. Bottom of the fifth here at Show Airport Field, game three of the VBL semifinal, as Henry Ford puts a charge into that one, but way out in front of it and foul. It goes towards the high school. I'm Nathan Schwartz, joined by Alex Rocco. And Alex, a really big fourth inning for the Tom Sox. And it all started by the man at the dish. Henry Ford hit a leadoff single, and then just the floodgates opened from there. Jacob Ferentz was hit by a pitch, and just a multitude of hits. Ford repeats that swing, sends it deep out to left field. Goodbye, baseball. Henry Ford does it again, his sixth home run in the last 10 games, and the Sox extend the lead up to five. And he squares the bunt, gets this one down to the right side. This safety squeeze will work, and nobody's covering first base. Perfectly executed safety squeeze for Alvarez. It'll go in the book as an RBI single and make that a two-run lead, 3-1 Tom Sox. Could be fitting, let's see what Alvarez does here. Ground ball, third base, the throw comes to the plate. Popple drops the ball and Teal scores the go-ahead run. Front Royal had the play made, Popple drops the ball, and the Sox have their first lead tonight, it's three to two. Burnham today, one for two with a double and a run scored. 1-1, one, one fastball, that one's lined into center field. Lambros back to the track. He leaps and pulls it back. Elijah Lambros. Unbelievable. Robbed a homer earlier this year at Iowa. Does the same thing here today. What a play for Maryland center fielder. That is absolutely tremendous. A great rip at the plate from Burnham. Does exactly what he's supposed to. And then Spider-Man out there in center field. Gets the grab. Great job from Lambros. Loses the sunglasses. Kenny Lippman loves it on the mound. What a play for Lambros. He's been doing defensive gems all season long in center field for the Terps and adds another one to the resume right there. Chris Royal remains at first base. Bryce Martinez at second as that ball is grounded past the diving Arroyo and into right field for a base hit. Galvin will round first base. The throw from Garrett Spikes. The second is in time to get him. How about that for Garrett Spikes? Mr. Tom Sock coming up clutch on the very first play of the game. But what a great energy setter to start this game. Garrett Spikes came in as a defensive replacement as that ball is lined in. Another great defensive play. This time it's Gumpf on the left side. What a start for the Tom Sox on the corner outfield spots here in game two. 10 of the 11 earned runs he's given up have come in two separate outings as there's the new season high in strikeouts for Jeremy. Six batters face, six strikeouts for Goins. The hitter Anglim has no idea what's coming. Change up throws him. Nick Dean strikes out. Garrett Anglim is first of the night. As the 0-1 from Ott. Slider grounded to third. LaRusso dives to his right. Throws cross time into first. Web gem again for this Maryland defense. This time it's LaRusso at the hot corner, making his return to third base. Arizona hosting St. Louis, and the Dodgers hosting Toronto. Kyle Edwards diving into the hole. What a play by Kyle Edwards. Ranging to his right, sliding with the backhand, getting up a strong throw to first base for the first out. And we started off the day with great defense. It's starting to come back right here to begin the fourth. Game, if Harrisonburg could drop it. A lot of playoff implications. Hard ground ball to third. Ford goes to second for one. Martinez's relay is in time. A big inning ending 5-4-3 double play to get cash out of the jam. As the 1-1 one, one fastball, that's another one to third. Tate, even with the grasp, will throw to first and two up, two down to begin the day for Forsyth. Root ahead quickly 0-2 and goes to the breaking ball for the third pitch of the at-bat and Newman is quickly down on strikes. What a start for Zach Root. 
3-1. That's poked into shallow left. Garrett Spikes was playing shallow already with the left-handed batter, and he's able to make the catch. No problem for out number one. But Maryland just trying to end this game. Can do it with one swing of the bat. Shanneman gets the sign, the 2-2. And that one's drilled. Left center field sending Sartori back to the wall. It's over his head and gone. Maryland wins it. Nick LaRusso, a walk-off winner in the bottom of the 10th. And Maryland advances to the semifinals. Nick LaRusso, the hero tonight. He's getting showered. They've gone onto the pitcher's mound to celebrate. Nick LaRusso ends the game with one swing of the bat. Craziness here in Omaha. Or at third, 3-1 the count to Schliger. Drives it, left field, that is down for a base hit. All the way into the corner. Or scores, Schliger into second. It's a go-ahead RBI double for Luke Schliger and the Terps take a 3-2 lead here in the eighth. Luke Schliger comes up clutch again for Maryland. His second double of the game could not have come at a better time. And here's the three and one pitch from Nelson from the windup and that's cranked. Deep right field, Petrutz has his fifth of the year. Ian Petrutz goes yard, he just cannot stop hitting. Home runs, it's two to nothing, Maryland. Unreal numbers from the senior. As the 1-1, one, one. fastball lined into the left center field gap. That's gonna go all the way to the wall. Schliger will round third, here he comes home. It's a RBI single for Nick LaRusso. RBI number 66 on the year. Terps lead, one nothing. On Thursday night, in extra innings, and now a three nothing lead here in the fifth as Akopian puts a charge into that one. This is sending Swanson back to the wall. Does it have enough? It does! Goodbye baseball! Eddie Hakopian goes yard. His seventh long ball of the year extends the Terps lead to four here in the fifth. During his time 0-2 oh, is lined into right field. We are tied. Or scores Schliger on his way to third. Nick LaRusso extends that hitting streak to 19 games and ties things up at five here in the eighth. Harris has made a couple nice plays against Spikes defensively tonight, and Spikes sends this one way back, deep right field, and the Tom Sox lead in game two. Garrett Spikes launches a mammoth three-run homer, his first of the summer, and the Sox lead five to four. Two runners on, and that's a chopper to Reynas at short. He throws to first in time for the out, but Woods will come home to score. And Elijah Lambros with an RBI ground out gives Maryland a 3-0 lead here in the second. Put a stamp on this game. And there's a ground ball. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Schliger is heading for third. We'll see if Swope sends him. He holds him at third. And just as I say, Matt Shaw has been quiet. He puts together a great at-bat. A double down the left field line for Shaw, his first hit of the ball game, and just like that, Maryland's got two runners in scoring position with nobody out here to start the seventh. The 0-1, Petrut cranks one, deep right field, and it's into the Ole Miss bullpen. Ian Petrut with his second grand slam of the season, and Maryland breaks this one open. It's seven to one in favor of the Dirty Terps. Three two from Sonye. Laced into deep right, no doubt, shot for Petrutz. Ian Petrutz does it again, and Maryland ties it up at two in the top of the third. As KJ Alexander takes the first pitch fastball, first strike one, and there is a deep drive high into left center field, sending Bradley all the way back to the track. He dives, and it's out of his glove and onto the warning track. Alexander will round second, take a hard stop, and get back into the bag. It's a two-out booming double for KJ Alexander, and finally the Tom Sox have a runner back in scoring position. Revis has been most effective today when the breaking ball is working off the outside of the plate and working in. Let's see if he goes back to it here. The one-two, Schliger takes off, and it's a high fly ball, deep left field, Alderman watches it, Nick LaRusso goes yard. 
He gave him the curveball, and LaRusso takes advantage. A two-run blast for the senior, and Maryland jumps out to a two-to-one lead here in the third. Keister shaded up the middle. Shaw playing straight up at shortstop, but playing more in line with the bag. 2-0 is lined down the left field line. That's going all the way to the wall. Orr will field off the wall. Here comes Pedarini around third. Shaw's throw to the plate is in time to get Pedarini at home plate. What a relay. That's why you put Jacob Orr in left field. Plays the ball perfectly off the wall. Right in line to Shaw. Then his throw, a laser to home plate. A defensive run saved by Maryland. The game is tied still at one. Mays on second, Ziegler on first, one away here in the second. One, two from Lippman, grounded to LaRusso, backhand, steps on the third base bag, throws the first in time. The 5-3 double play gets Lippman out of the jam. Great defense by LaRusso at the hot corner, and we head to the bottom of the second. One, two pitch from Dave Falco. Swing and a miss, he got him. Dave Falco comes back from the seven minute replay review, stares down the Nebraska bench and trots back to the Maryland dugout, keeping this game tied at one. We finally can head to the seventh inning stretch. Count 0-1 to Dylan Carey. Here's the pitch, and that one's lined into left. Orr is coming up, dives and makes the catch. Jacob Orr, another stellar defensive play out there in left field ends the bottom of the second inning. 2-2 two -two from Dean, got him swinging. Back-to-back -back keys for Dean to end the sixth. How about Nick Dean? Six strong, only the one run allowed, five Ks, and the game remains tied at one. Maryland's bats continue to struggle here in Omaha as we begin the bottom half of the fifth inning. It was a one, two, three, bottom of the fourth for Jack Whitlock. He's gone an inning and a third in relief of Aaron Savari. It's the third pitcher of the game for Iowa and the first pitch of the inning to Jacob Orr, a fastball for strike one. Interesting for Maryland, I just saw Nick Dean make his way out to the Terps bullpen. Not sure if that's meaning he's gonna pitch or if he's just going out there to chat it up with his fellow pitchers, but something to keep an eye on. I'll keep my eyes on the bullpen just in case Dean does make a relief appearance. Would be quite interesting. Dean's never pitched in relief in his Maryland career. Every time Dean's appeared, it's been in a start as the 1-1 one, one to Orr's outside to make the count two ball and one strike. Orr lined out to Peterson out there and left in his first at bat. Three for four yesterday. 2-1 from Lock goes to the off speed, and there's a swing and a miss from Orr. 71 miles an hour on that breaking ball for Whitlock. Whitlock has been very dominant in this tournament so far. As the 2-2, breaking ball just foul. Would have been extra bases for Orr. But instead keeps the count even at two balls, two strikes. This is Whitlock's third appearance in the tournament. If you include today, he's gone four and a third innings, only given up one run on one hit. Struck out five. 2-2 two -two from Whitlock to Ord. He pops it up, foul territory. Tello racing towards the camera well, and he's just going to run out of room. Over the grounds crew. The count will stick at two balls and two strikes. Orr did not begin the year as a starter. Smarslack had the job in left field. Nobody even questioned it. Matt Woods was the starting right fielder. As the 2-2 outside for ball three. But then Smarslack begins to struggle. Woods fights some injuries. Orr gets some starts in the, in the beginning of the year. Did not hit the ball at all. Really struggled. Had that grand slam against South Florida in game one of the year, but other than that, could not put a hit together. As the 3-2, down low for ball four. So Orr draws the leadoff walk, but back to Orr's trajectory this year. Then sat down for a couple weeks while Zmarzlak and Woods were both healthy. Then Zmarzlak starts to struggle. Orr gets some chances out in left field. 
then both Matt Woods and Ian Petrutz get injured at the same time. Jacob Orr becomes an every game player for the Terps and eventually wins over the starting spot in left field in favor of Bobby Marslack. Bobby hasn't appeared since senior day and before that hadn't appeared in about a week or so either. First pitch of the at-bat for Keister is fouled away for strike one. But Bobby really had an up and down year. Was really down to begin the year, was hitting below 200 for about a month. The guys average all the way up into the 270s. But now sitting right at 265 as the second pitch to Keister inside for ball one. Like I said, Bobby hasn't appeared since senior day against Minnesota, which was two weeks ago today, and had limited at-bats in the Nebraska series the week before that. 1-1 one, one to Keister outside, and Whitlock a little bit of a command issue here in the fifth. Whitlock did not appear in the game yesterday for the Hawkeyes. As that pitch for Keister, that's drilled into left. Peterson back to the track. Is it into the bullpen? Yes, it is! A two-run bomb for Kevin Keister in the turf strike first in the championship. The power surge for Kevin Keister continues. His ninth home run of the year, RBI number 50, and the Terps lead 2-0 here in the fifth. My, oh my, Kevin Keister doesn't have a lot of power, but when he connects, it goes a long way. That was the furthest hit ball for Maryland in this tournament. And now Luke Schligger up at the plate with the bases empty and nobody out. And the Terps now leading two to nothing. There's a foul ball for Schligger. He's quickly down 0-2. But how about Kevin Keister? If you would have asked me before the week who would be the Terps to Homer in this tournament. And Kevin Keister and Eddie Akopian where names you listed, I wouldn't have believed you. But only three Terps have hit home runs, and two of them are Hedy Akopian and Kevin Keister. Schligger went down on strikes. It's the second strikeout for Whitlock, and now one away here in the fifth. First pitch to Shaw is in there for strike one. Whitlock trying to bounce back after the homer for Keister. Second pitch to Shaw, and he smacks it foul. That one easily over the bullpen if it stays in fair territory. Shaw down 0-2. The pitch from Whitlock. Breaking ball just misses off the plate. For ball one, and an underrated part of that, I believe that was Logan Ott out in the bullpen who made the catch on the fly on Keister's home run. He was warming up, took a look at the ball, and made the catch. One, two from Shaw outside for ball two, and Ott used to be an outfielder here at Maryland. Was a full outfielder as a freshman, got a little bit of pitching in and then transitioned into a full-time pitcher. There's a great diving catch by Raider Tello at third base, and Shaw is robbed of a base hit. Shaw finally puts good contact on the baseball, and Raider Tello denies him of a trip to first base. And it's good to see Matt finally make some good contact in this tournament. And now Nick LaRusso 
for the third time at the plate today. He's 0 for 1 with the walk. The first pitch from Whitlock is on the inside corner for strike one. That was only the second hit of the game for Maryland. Keister's home run. The only other was Hakopian's single back in the second. 0-1 slider. That just missed. It makes the count one ball, one strike. There's a deep drive to left, sending Peterson back to the track. It's at the fence. He leaps. Goodbye, baseball. Nick LaRusso goes yard for the second time in the tournament. The second homer of the inning for Maryland. Terps lead 3-0 in the fifth. Nick LaRusso, the same spot as the walk-off homer from Thursday night. Have the bats finally come alive here in Omaha? I think so. Exactly what the Terps needed here in the fifth inning. Two home runs, a two-run blast from Keister, a solo shot for LaRusso. And Whitlock struggling here in the fifth. Whitlock hadn't allowed more than three runs in an inning since March the 10th. There's a ground ball to first. Still, Riggy will step on the bag and end the inning. But what a performance by the Terps at the plate here in the fifth. A two-run blast for Kevin Keister and a solo shot for Nick LaRusso puts the Terps in the lead here in the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Maryland three, Iowa nothing as we head to the top of the sixth here on the Maryland Baseball Network. Three more outs for the Tom Sox and they advance to the VBL semifinals. Nathan Schwartz, Alex Rocco with you and let's give a round of applause for Mike Eggert. It looked like maybe in the fourth or the fifth inning, his night was going to be over, but he goes all the way through the eighth, Alex. Mike Eggert was at, was fantastic. There's not enough adjectives to, to describe what this performance means for the Sox, and Eggert went eight innings, gave up five hits, allowed just the two runs on the two-run shot from Drew Kemp. Didn't walk anyone, struck out seven. He was fantastic. His deepest start in a Tom Sox uniform, and it was exactly what they needed, and now Lennon Coleman turns things over to big David Ugawa. David Udagawa, the rising senior at UC Irvine, spent the last three seasons at Northwestern. And now David is on for the save opportunity. His last appearance technically was on Wednesday against Percival, but there, with the resumption of the previous game, it goes in the book as an appearance, but he didn't throw any pitches. So the last time he was on the mound was last Sunday in the doubleheader at Winchester where he struggled. He did give up three earned runs on four hits over three innings in game two of that doubleheader against the Royals. But now making his eighth appearance on the mound this summer. He's gone 20 innings and in ERA just south of five at 495. And just his second appearance at home this season. And the first pitch is fouled away for strike one. It's Popple in the batter's box for the Cardinals. Before we go and continue to talk about Dave Udagawa, just want to one more nugget about Mike Eggert. His start tonight tied for the second longest in Tom Sox history going eight innings tonight. That's exactly what Charlottesville needed, saving arms for this playoff push. Udagawa's 0-1 delivery fouled away. David sits 92-94 to with his fastball. Slider in the mid to upper 80s as well. Has a sinker that he mixes in with the fastball and a changeup off of that slider. 0-2, goes to the slider and gets Popo swinging. Udagawa, three pitches, one out. That was a big strikeout for Udagawa as Popo started the rally back in the fourth inning, had that leadoff triple where the next hitter, Drew Camp, went yard just a couple of pitches after that, but a big strikeout for Udagawa to set things down and now get, you have one out in the inning, two outs left to close out this game and move on to the next round, but it all starts with one. That was a big out for Udagawa. 
First pitch, fastball down low. This is Drew Camp, who hit the two-run blast for Front Royal all the way back in the fourth inning that at the time gave them a 2-0 lead. They held that lead all the way through the bottom of the eighth inning. And now Udagawa trying to shut the door for the Sox. 1-0 delivery, fastball, that one just misses. So they count quickly 2-0 to the hottest bat in the Cardinal lineup. Well, that's why it was paramount to get Popple out as Camp has gone yard three times against the Sox pitching staff throughout the season. So you want to face him with as little guys on base as possible. That one's spiked. It goes over the glove of Alvarez. And now a 3-0 count here for Utagawa against Camp. David, opponents hitting 288 against him so far. He's given up three home runs this year. That has been somewhat of an issue for him this summer. 3-0 fastball. That one just misses the top of the zone, and there's a one-out walk for Drew Camp. Well, just Utagawa lost control on that at-bat, but now it brings up the tying run in Daniel Stevens. Stevens not really with a whole lot of pop out of his bat. And now Stevens, who's one for three tonight, a single in his last at-bat to lead off the seventh, reach on an air in the second, lined out, in the fourth, represents the tying run. This one spiked for Udagao, and he's thrown five consecutive balls. Well, just like Udagao is putting too much pressure on himself, trying to overthrow pitches, it is a big moment in this game, obviously, with the series in the balance, but just a nice decision by Alvarez to go out to the mound, calm his pitcher down, get on the same page, and let Dave get back to doing Dave things, as we saw when he's on his game, he punched out Popple in just three pitches. Udagawa, just the second time he's come out of the bullpen this summer. The first time was all the way back in his first appearance on June the 13th. There's finally a strike for Udagawa. Salvi Alvarez calmed him down in that mound visit, and he's able to get back to an even count. You know, Salvi's always a calming presence, likes to laugh, keeps things loose, and that's exactly what you need in a spot like this. 1-1 one, one from David. Another swing and a miss from Daniel Stevens, and the count moves to 1-2. and two. Udigao has been basically either a guy that's not going to give up any runs or a guy that gives up a couple of runs each time he goes out there. He's given up three runs and three separate appearances. Goes to the slider right there, 1-2. It's outside. But right here, Lyndon Coleman hoping it can be one of those appearances where he goes 1-2-3 and is able to get out of here with a win. Camp the runner at first after the walk. That ball down low, so a full count here from Utagawa to Stevens. Utagawa, six foot four, 230 pounds, transferring to UC Irvine, a native of Phoenix, Arizona. Payoff delivery, fastball, that one catches the outside corner. He got him looking. Second strikeout of the inning for Utagawa, and one more out for a trip to the semifinals. That was absolutely painted in the strike zone. Excellent command on the fastball from Utagawa to get the punch out, and now Front Royal down to its final out. It's going to be up to Taylor Schultz, who's one for three in the ball game, a single back in the second inning. Struck out looking in the fourth, flew out in the seventh. First pitch from Udagawa's down low for ball one. Udagawa has given up 10 walks this summer over now 20 and two-thirds innings. Make that 11 walks if you include the one he gave up to camp just a few moments ago. 1-0, elevated fastball and foul for Schultz to even the count at one. Schultz is a guy who struggled heading into the postseason, went just two for 24 in his last seven games, but had three hits in the first two games, also picked up a single in this contest. 1-1, one, one, driven to right, Fink on the move. It's going to drop in fair territory. Here comes Fink's throw. It goes all the way to third base. Schultz will advance to second, and the drama builds here for Front Royal in Charlottesville. Down to... A 1-1 count. Taylor Schultz drills a double down the right field line, and now the tying run stands at second base for Jaden Anderson. 
And that was a very confusing play. As Schultz said no if that ball was fair or foul. Sort of just stopped on his path, running to second base. And now it's ruled a fair ball. And now you have two runners in scoring position for arguably the guy that has given this Tom Sock pitching staff the most fits this year. Mike Egger really didn't have any trouble throughout the, his eight innings. The lone trouble he faced was that leadoff triple in the fourth, which immediately was gone after the two-run homer cleared the bases. Now for Utagawa, really hard spot. And for him, it's, he's been warming up since that fourth inning, so he's been just itching to get out there. Just talking to him, he is a guy that loves the sport. He wants to go out there every day if he could. He's been a guy that started a lot of games with the rainouts and such. He's only pitched about once a week this summer. So finally getting a chance to pitch after a week, only going to get the one inning. And he's been warming up for about an hour now. How difficult is that for him, Alex? Well, it's extremely diff diff difficult, especially because Udegao is a guy who is used to not coming out of the bullpen. He started so many games this year, so anytime you're consistently warming up over and over and you're not sure when your number is going to get called, you have to stay in that game-ready mentality, and it just eats on you. So now Dave finally gets his number called up in a huge spot facing Jaden Anderson. Curious to see if they try and pitch around Anderson, a guy who's went yard against the Sox two or three times this year. The intentional walk definitely had to have been considered right there with first base open and two outs. It's going to go down as a single and an advancement on the throw for Schultz. Now, Jaden Anderson can tie the game with a base hit. Udagawa will work out of the line. The first pitch, fastball, outside corner, strike one. Anderson in the game today is 0 for 3, a strikeout, fly out, and a foul out back in his last at bat. Udagawa, the 0-1. Breaking ball in there for strike two, and the Cardinals have one strike remaining in their season. Maybe that mound visit was all that David Utagawa needed. Just came back, refocused, and now Front Royal looking to stay alive here. Runners on second and third. 0-2 is the count. Two away here in the ninth. The pitch. Swung on and missed. Utagawa shuts the door, and the Sox are headed to the semis. There was a lot of drama. Tom Sox trailed going into the bottom of the eighth. They score three, then Utagawa gets three outs in the top of the ninth, and the Tom Sox avoid the upset. 